I think we're live in all the places. Hey, I've got everything going on here. And I'm just standing instead of sitting. So you guys over here are going to have just a little harder time to see both dogs. But they're both here. And today we are talking more about the emotional dysregulation cycle. So just a quick recap, but you can look at yesterday at Wednesday's live where I talked about the emotional dysregulation cycle in dogs. And what is it? Emo if your dog is in an emotional dysregulation cycle, their nervous system is overwhelmed, it is short circuiting, and it keeps them stuck in fight or flight. How do you know if your dog is in that? So here's the doggy symptoms you might be experiencing. You could be, um, your dog could be barking and going nuts at the television every time they see or hear an animal or certain um, commercials. They could be barking out the window. They could be barking and lunging on walks. Um, they could be barking and carrying on in the backyard. They might have stranger danger where you're worried they're going to bite somebody coming into your house and have to be put down. Um, all, just like, like their nervous system is just cranking all the time. They are not relaxed. They can't seem to relax. And they're just ready to go, ready to fight, right, all the time. Okay. Now, what are your symptoms if you have a dog with emotional dysregulation cycle? Like, these guys don't. Minty is more. She's two. She gets a little barky at certain times. Geo, mellow, 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 mellow fellow. Okay. You may feel frustrated confused, embarrassed, and I would even say like hopeless or disheartened because you're, you have probably hired more than two trainers, maybe three, maybe four, maybe more. And you've done all the things that these people have told you to do. You've taught your dog to sit, to go to place. You've tried to do some counter conditioning and desensitization. Um, there's a myriad of things that, that you could have tried with your dog. And yet it's not like, it's not resonating with them. It's not resonating with your dog be because their emotional, <laughs> their nervous system is so dysregulated that they really have a hard time taking information in. So, uh, here's an example. If you're on a plane and for whatever reason, you know, the person next to you being very lovely, they're talking with you, they're hand, maybe they're handing you $50 bills, $100 bills, and they're talking, you're like, hey, this is great. Like, I could do this all day. Cool. And then the, the plane takes a little bit of a dive and, um, and the oxygen masks come down. Do you care about the money? Do you care about what he's saying to you or she's saying to you? Or she could be telling you the secrets of life or where the treasure is buried. But when those oxygen masks come down, you don't care because your nervous system is now ah! survival mode, survival mode, survival mode. What do I need to do to survive? And I don't need the $50. I don't need the $100. I don't need the treats you're trying to put in my face. I don't need whatever it is that else that you might be trying to do because your dog's nervous system is, is activated. Just like your nervous system would be activated if the, um, if the oxygen mask came down came down while you're on a plane, okay? So just to kind of get you guys understanding where your dog is at then why you are feeling so frustrated, why the training is not working. And frankly, sit down, stay, go to place is not going to solve an emotional dysregulation cycle. It's not going to solve stranger danger. It's not going to solve reactivity. Those things are good, and you, and you need some of those things, but that's not a key issue. Okay, so we talked about your symptoms um, that you might have. You, you're feeling frustrated. You're feeling confused. Um, I had somebody say that it felt pointless, um, or they were just felt disheartened, like just like they just didn't understand with all the training they did why their dogs were still aggressive and reactive. Right, I've done all the socialization. I've done all the training. I walk my dog. I take my dog in the woods. They visit. They do this. They do that. They're at dog parks. They're at doggy daycare. I'm doing all the things. Why is my training not working? Your training's not working. I'm going to say it one more time because your dog is stuck in an emotional dysregulation cycle 
which keeps their nervous system stuck in fight or flight. Okay, they're overwhelmed and they're short circuiting. Okay, then so I talked about your symptoms. All right, so there's sort of four key areas that we at Everything Dog, Amy and I, look at when we are working either in our online group class or with individuals one-on-one, -on -one, what we are looking at. And those are, we look at management, we look at training, we look at welfare, and we look at emotion. Now training, I'm just gonna touch on each of these just a little bit. I try to keep my lives to 10 minutes. And you guys know what to do. If you want to get on the wait list for our next free webinar, which is the end of this month, you just need to write emotional dysregulation in the comments. Instagram, you can DM or the comments, Facebook, YouTube, you know where to put them. So, and we will be happy to send that. You can also check out our blog on our website, which is everything dog and H as in New Hampshire, only because guys, it was cheaper than just everything dog. That's, we're not limited to New Hampshire because we have, we have clients all over the country, including Canada. All right. So that's all that thing is done. So you can check out our blog. There's an article there on emotional dysregulation as well. If you want it, if you want to hit that up as well. So when we talk about training, this is training, right? The dogs, Geo's got this down. I wouldn't have to give him treats probably till the very end, but Minty's still learning to, to stay in the chair for a period of time. We have a little bit of duration on this behavior. So training can be also what your dog has learned, right? And they might've learned something traumatic. They might have been attacked, they might have been stepped on by somebody, um, they might have had some, well, mental issue would be trauma, but also falls under welfare. So training, I want you to think training slash learning. What have I trained my dog to do? What has my dog learned to do? What are their life lessons, right? Just like all of you perceive the world differently, you, you see it through your own humanness, through your own life experiences, through things that happened to you as a child, messages that you got, adulthood, like the whole thing kind of just meshes in us and, and we come out as who we are. And we're, we're always changing, right? And evolving, at least I hope so. So your dog is like that. They're a living, breathing being who is going through their world, their life, taking in experiences, sights and sounds and all the things that are happening to them. And it's, creating them as a dog. Okay, so so Minty's only been with us. I, I don't know, giving examples not gonna work. Okay, so, all right, so we look at training. We look at management. Management's a big one. There are times when you're just going to have to manage your dog. Don't go for a walk. Don't go to daycare. Keep them away from the windows. Give them a bone. Put them in their crate with a bone so they're not barking out the window and you can have a moment of rest and peace without all this, right? We need to stop the behavior from happening so that we can stop the nervous system from constantly reacting while we're doing other things. So management is a huge piece to this. Emotion. I, I would say that this is all about emotion, right? And that behaviors don't solve emotional issues. So when I think of emotion, I'm talking about fear, anxiety, um, learned negative experiences. If your dog was walking down the street and they were attacked, then guess what? They um, they may be uh, having issues, right? Being walked. I just want to see what was happening over here on Instagram. Um, if your dog was came out of a an abusive situation, they may have issues with certain things. So. Dogs that are in emotional dysregulation cycle tend to be reactive and or aggressive. Oh, no, it's hard to wait, isn't it? Tend to be reactive and aggressive. And we have to find the root cause of all of that emotion in order to successfully train and teach our dogs to become, to train and teach our dogs that we're, we've got it, we're driving the bus, we're in charge and they don't need to take things into their own hands to solve it or to move things away. Okay. Hang on. Stop whining and give her a minute. Oh, there's another one for you. There's one for you and another one for you. Okay. So 
emotion is huge. Um, in the future lives, I may show you the um, graphic that we use of a iceberg where on top of the iceberg is all of the symptoms that you're dealing with. And below the bottom part of the iceberg, that's where all the, that's where all the root causes live. That's where all the, the whys live, um, right? The experiences, the different things. So anyway, we're going to do that. We'll probably, we'll talk about that next week, possibly, possibly. And then the last one is welfare. What do we mean by welfare? Welfare is, is your dog in pain? Is your dog having severe allergies? I can't tell you how many dogs right now we are working with that have like serious issues of allergies that have to be addressed. Yes, you can use medication to stop the itching, but we also need to find the root cause of that allergen so we can try to eliminate it if it's possible. If it's a food allergy, God, let's like stop giving them chicken so they can rest and not be itchy and, and feel better. Um, so we look at <clears throat> health, nutrition, any past trauma, any traumas could be surgeries, uh, it could be illnesses that they had. There's a there's a whole a whole list of things. So the four areas that we look at are management, training, emotion, and welfare to address your dog's emotional dysregulation cycle. We can't, it's not fair to you or your dog to say, okay, well, we're just going to take them out of daycare and we're not going to walk them ever again. Well, I mean, if you want to do that, you can do that. And maybe they have to come out of daycare. That That's, I wouldn't be sad about that. That's for sure. Um, so that's part of what we have to do, but to get them emotionally regulated. But then there's other things that we can do to help them um, emotionally regulate themselves. All right, so I'm going to say it one more time, then I'm going to sign off. If you are interested in getting on the wait list for our end of March free webinar, which is, I'm sorry, I don't have the new title yet. The old title was Dog Aggression Fact versus Fiction. We're leaning more towards um, why socialization is not going to fix your aggressive dog, why more socialization is not going to fix your aggressive dog. Because it won't, because you've already been doing that, and you've already done But you don't know what else to do. So you can join us. Drop words emotional dysregulation in the DMs, in the comments, and we will send you the link to that, as well as the link to our blog all about emotional dysregulation. All right, so I'm going to sign off on three different things. Have a great Friday, you guys. You know how to reach us. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. We take a look. We answer everything. Uh, you can send us an email, info, I-N-F-O, at everythingdognh, New Hampshire, dot com. Although we have clients all over the country, including Canada. So I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye, Instagram. And YouTube, you guys are last. See you later.